hey, there's Curtis Richardson. All right, we're having some technical difficulties at the moment, so hang with us. Um, okay. Can you hear me? I can hear yes. you just fine. Okay. All right. Hey, Bill. Hey, Commissioner. How are you? Good. All right, we are actually live. I'm sorry about that uh, slow okay. start here. Um, welcome everyone to our 2020 virtual candidate forums. Uh, if you are on social media, please hit the share button and help all your friends see today's discussion. I am William Hatfield, the editor of the Tallahassee Democrat, and I will be today's moderator. You can see I'm not standing today. Uh, I'd like to introduce Chris Schobel from the League of Women Voters of Tallahassee, our partner in these forums. Hello. Before we get started, uh, because it's 2020 and anything that can go wrong will go wrong, we ask that you bear with us through any technical difficulties we may have. Uh, I think you've already uh, succeeded on that test once so far. Uh, hopefully that will be the only hiccup. Uh, we are here today with the candidates for city commission. Curtis Richardson is the incumbent and his challenger is Bill Shack. Uh, I think y'all are pros by this point on how this works, but I'll recap just uh, really quickly. We will rotate which uh, candidate gets to answer each question first. We have a lot of questions, so we're going to ask the candidates to keep your answers to about 90 seconds or a minute. We'll tell you uh, what the duration is on each question. Um, maybe a little shorter for follow-ups. I will be keeping time. I have a bell, which I will ding when your time is up. Sounds like that. You can get to see me ding in this view. Uh, you don't have to come to a dead stop right then, but please finish your sentence and we'll keep moving on. Uh, in the middle of the forum, we will have a lightning round uh, where we ask you to keep your answers to just one sentence. Um, if you're watching on social media and you have questions for the candidates, you can type them into the comments and we'll get to as many as we can. Please only ask questions that we can ask to both candidates. Any questions before we start? I'm Let's, ready. All right. Let's jump in with the uh, first question then. And uh, today, the League of Women Voters is going to start us out. We're doing things a little bit differently. We've got uh, questions kind of uh, chunked on different topics. And the first topic we're going to talk about is policing in Tallahassee. And uh, League of Women Voters will start us. Thank you. The Citizen Review Board adopted by the City Commission yesterday creates an advisory body that makes recommendations after reviewing the police department's actions. Is this a sufficient response to citizens' concerns about police violence? And what do you think about the protesters' proposal of an elected civil policy, civilian policy accountability council that would have budget oversight and hiring and firing authority? And uh, uh, Richardson, you will start. Okay, thank you. Uh, and first of all, I want to thank uh, the League of Women Voters and the Tallahassee Democrat for having us here today to discuss the issues and challenges facing uh, our community. And this is an excellent way to start uh, because as you know, the national narrative uh, has suggested that uh, there have been some police shootings, justified or unjustified, but predominantly of uh, African-American men and women across the country. And this has given rise to the Black Lives uh, Matter movement, uh, which I support. I believe that Black lives do matter. Uh, and other protests around the state, most peaceful, uh, and I hope that they will all remain peaceful. Uh, but one of the things that has come out of that has been a call for police reform. Uh, I think we are ahead of the game here in Tallahassee. Uh, we have created a citizen review board. Uh, it will be appointed by the city commission uh, and will review police actions when use of force uh, is used or if uh, there happens to be a, a killing by a police officer. We have compiled all of the best practices of community citizen review boards around the state and incorporated those 
into our ordinance. In terms of an independently elected body, the city commission does not have the authority to do that. That would be that would require a change to our charter, uh, 10,000 signatures, uh, and be put on the ballot for the citizens of this city uh, to vote on. Uh, Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Shack, same question. Yes, great question. Um, what I believe is the, the Citizens Review Board, uh, to be quite honest, I believe it was, uh, I think we went too fast on it. I think we should have took more time to really dive into what it's going to look like um, and, and how it's going to be structured. Um, one of the things I've been a proponent of since the beginning of talking about this is the people that are going to be chosen to be on the review board, I believe, don't need to be chosen by the city commission. <clears throat> there needs to be another entity, whether it's a uh, uh, the, the the ethics board or something like that that's unconnected uh, because we need citizen input, um, not government input. And, and that's what I believe citizens really want out of this. Um, so I think that's the direction that I would have went to take a little bit more time to really dive into it. I know it's something that our community wants. I know it's probably something our community needs, but uh, we, we definitely need to start to redirect the way we police in our community. That's that's certain that we need to do that. And I'm all a proponent for that and for helping uh, using human services to do that. Um, I was fortunate enough to listen to a uh, uh, someone who was on the Citizens Review Board in Orlando and listen to her. And it sounded like uh, it was something our community is going to be happy with uh, to start. And uh, it was very eye-opening to hear her talk about the things that uh, are very positive about it. And there wasn't a lot of negative things about it. So uh, I'm encouraged that this is the right direction we need to go. And uh, so, but uh, I thought we could have probably taken a little bit more time to uh, see what it's going to look like. Thank you. Uh, so staying with this idea of policing, you know, recently Tallahassee made headlines um, uh, almost nationwide for its response to a protest involving about 100 people. Uh, police, many in riot gear, outnumbered protesters. 15 people were arrested in a chaotic scene caught on video and photos. More were arrested in the days following based on video evidence. Reaction has kind of been coming in from around the nation. Some see it as an appropriate application of law and order. Others say it was an unnecessary, massive show of force, unlike anything Tallahassee has seen in the past. Do you mm -hmm. think the response was appropriate? And is mm -hmm. there anything you'd have liked to see differently? Uh, Mr. Shack, we're starting with you on this. Well, I think it was an uh, unprecedented uh, show of force. Um, however, if you look around the country and look on TV and see the kind of uh, uh, protests and, and, and things that happen around the country, um, it, it's not hard to understand why uh, our community was getting prepared um, look what happened last night, uh, you know, right after the uh, announcement of the uh, uh, Breonna Taylor grand jury. Uh, so, uh, so, so, you know, I, I think once, you know, you look at the, the city and, and the country, I think we got prepared for the worst. However, um, it is my opinion that once uh, the city of Tallahassee and the TPD and all our law enforcement partners realized uh, this was not going to be anything like that, we probably should have backed off. We probably should have sent the folks at Riot Gear Home uh, and, and, and then proceeded to be part of the, uh, you know, uh, protest. Um, however, I've always been consistent that once you cross the line into lawlessness and break the law and not, uh, you know, uh, disrespect uh, commands by law enforcement, that they have to, you know, you're, you're going to have to face a penalty. So, um, but, but I believe we could have probably uh, uh, solved that by not showing such force after we realized we weren't going to have such a, a problem. Thank you. Commissioner Richardson, same question. Thank you, Bill. Uh, I was out of town that weekend. Uh, I had a death in the family, and so I didn't get a chance to follow the events until I got back to town and been briefed. Uh, I'm not going to second guess the law enforcement cooperative that responded uh, to that. Uh, according to Chief Revel, uh, they, res they responded in a way that they thought was appropriate. Uh, and what we were told is it had the protesters uh, responded to police commands, that show of force would never have appeared. They were there, but they wouldn't have appeared if uh, everybody had been compliant. Uh, do I believe that those young people had the right to protest? I absolutely do. 
I would defend that to the death. I believe that that is a way that uh, any American has to address their government. They have the right to peacefully protest, and the operative word is peacefully protest. And so um, I think that uh, if, if, if the protest had been peaceful, uh, there wouldn't have been an issue. Uh, we are now trying to bring the police and the protesters' understanding of what's expected of both sides, uh, that there will be a permit, that the protesters will follow the rules and regulations, and the police will simply be there uh, to maintain safety for everybody, safety for the protesters, safety for our motoring public, uh, and to keep our thoroughfares open to traffic. But I so think that- Following up on this briefly, uh, you know, this week, Governor DeSantis unveiled a top legislative priority with uh, other incoming uh, uh, House and Senate leaders uh, to crack down on what he calls disorder with protests. Uh, that includes stiffer penalties for those riot, loot, mm -hmm. and obstruct traffic. Uh, given the TPD also cracked down on obstructing traffic, what do you think of the governor's proposal? In just 45 seconds on this. Uh, Commissioner Richardson, we'll start with you. Well, I personally think that the governor's initiative goes too far. Uh, I think that groups can peacefully protest. I know my opponent has said that uh, if there is peaceful protest and they're blocking traffic, then they should be arrested. I don't believe we should go that far. I think the police should be there to facilitate uh, the safe, uh, 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 the safety of the pedestrians, of the young people that are uh, protesting uh, and make sure that our motoring public uh, is kept safe as well. But I certainly believe they have the right to protest and those harsh penalties should not be imposed that the governor uh, is recommending. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Shack. same question. Well, l luckily I'm not a legislator, so I don't have to decide on, on, on the way it's going to uh, come down. But uh, uh, certainly I believe the governor's uh, what he's trying to do is to protect uh, everyone. He's trying to protect uh, people that get caught up in uh, vehicles. He's trying to protect people that get uh, uh, police officers, uh, the brave men and women that, uh, you know, serve this country and our state. I think he's trying to protect them so that maybe when uh, a, a protester picks up a, a, an ice water bottle, and, and thinks about throwing it at a police officer to injure that police officer, they think twice about it because there's going to be a major penalty. So uh, I, I think uh, it, it could possibly go too far, but that's for the legislator to discuss when uh, they get back in session. Thank you. All right, so we're staying with policing, but shifting things a little bit. In the last okay. month, we've had eight shooting incidents with three people dead, including an innocent bystander and 10 people injured, including a 10-year-old and a 13-year-old. What do all of these incidents tell you about where our community is right now and what needs to be done? This is 90 seconds. And Mr. Shack, we're starting with you. Well, what it, what it tells me and our community is what have we been doing the past uh, 10 years? What have we been doing the past six years to combat crime? And I would argue uh, not very much. Um, it, it sounds to me like, and I think the stats are as of today, uh, 19 are dead. 54 shootings and 45 injuries so far in 2020. Um, if it was up to me and I was on the city commission, I'd be asking to hold a meeting every, twice a month with public safety being the number one issue and have Chief Revel speak to us and, ask, and so we can ask him, what are we doing this week to solve the crime issue in our community? Um, we need to get real tough with the people who are in charge, and that's the chief and the city manager who's over them and the, and the deputy manager who's over public safety. We need to start getting really tough and getting some answers. And that's part of the problem is that over these six years of being number one in crime, we haven't even asked, uh, you know, we haven't even had the answers. And I think we need to have them um, so that we can really combat what's going on here. So uh, how about we just simply address it as a number one priority in this city? And that's what I believe it is. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Richardson, same question. Thank you, Bill. And crime has been an issue in our community uh, for the past several years now. We've been ranked number one per capita uh, in crime, especially violent crime in the state. We've seen some progress. Our law enforcement collective 
has been working uh, more coordinated than they ever have. We've given the police department the resources that they need, increased staffing, uh, the technology that they need. And so we're, we're seeing some progress, but it's certainly nothing like what we need to see when we're seeing these violent crimes being committed on the streets uh, of our neighborhoods. Uh, is it a, simply a policing issue? We can't police our way out of this problem. It's gonna have to be a partnership among uh, our law enforcement agencies, our state attorney, neighborhoods, our businesses. Uh, we all are gonna have to be a, a part of this and we're gonna have to start looking at the root cause of these crimes, poverty, joblessness, lack of education, uh, healthcare. Uh, those are the kinds of issues that we're gonna have to address early on in these young people's lives to hopefully prevent them uh, from a life of crime in the teenage years and into adulthood. But we can't police our way out of this. It's gonna be a community collective, a holistic response to dealing with crime in our community. Thank you. Uh, uh, one quick follow up on this, just 45 second answer. Yes. Recently it's come to light that a North side and South side gang feud be was behind a series of shootings and murders in Tallahassee. What specifically can we do to target that part of things? Uh, Commissioner Richardson, 45 seconds. Well, I, I think I, I'm not sure it's a gang issue. Our law enforcement have not identified it as a gang issue. Uh, they have primarily identified it as groups of young people uh, on the south side of town and the north side that have a beef with each other. Uh, but whatever it is, it's unacceptable. We cannot have our young people, especially our young black men, uh, killing each other that way. Nobody's asking questions about where these guns are coming from. Uh, and again, we have to address the root cause of what's happening. A lot of it is drug related. Uh, and so we've got to make sure that these young people have the education that they need and training in order to get jobs where they can take care of themselves. Uh, we need to make sure that they have the education uh, that they need in order to be successful in life. And so uh, a police presence is needed, but it's again, it's going to have to be a holistic approach to dealing right. with uh, that element of crime. All right, Mr. Shaq, same question. Well, uh, back in 2018, I uh, took the Citizens Police Academy. And I could tell you that we had a whole entire night and segment of that night that talked about gang violence in Tallahassee. So this isn't something new. This is not something that we've not been told about. Uh, the city of Tallahassee Police Force absolutely know there is a gang problem here in Tallahassee. Um, and, and they have a whole division that fights it. The problem is, is that we, we need to put some serious community policing in place and it can't just be a bullet point on a flyer every two years when someone's running for office. It needs to be an actual thing that we put into place and work with these communities. It sounds so great to talk about it, but we actually have to put them in place. And I would argue we have plenty of neighborhoods with plenty of community leaders that are ready, willing, and able to do it. We just need to fund them and work with them so we can get some uh, meaningful progress. Thank you. Hmm. All right, uh, now we're gonna shift over uh, really quickly to uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, the, the movement has obviously, you know, we've seen this movement and arrest around the nation. It's hmm. led to soul searching among businesses, organizations, and government. Mm -hmm. I, I'm interested, I mean, has the movement led to any personal rev revelations for you? And also, what, if anything, should the city be doing to better serve and represent people of color at this time and going forward? And uh, Mr. Shaq, we're starting with you. Well, I, I, there's right and wrong in this community, and it doesn't matter the color of the person or anyone who's involved in anything. There's right and wrong, and there is absolutely right and wrong when it comes to law enforcement officers doing their job as well. So, you know, let, let's make sure that we're we're working on that. But I will tell you on the uh, you asked a qu question about how it has affected me personally, and I will tell you that um, at my job. Um, I work with a, a, a bunch of people at the uh, Kearney Center, and, and in particular, uh, a couple of them that I had had some, you know, 20, 30 minute conversations during this time uh, a few months back, and they have absolutely changed 
uh, the way I think about things. And, and I'll just give you a quick story as to why I feel that way. Uh, I was told by one of my uh, coworkers that uh, she has to tell her son when he goes out to don't forget that he's black. And that hit me so, uh, that really hit me to the point where, uh, you know, someone like myself would never understand that unless you hear it in that context. And uh, because I asked her, she was someone who was out at the protests, and I asked her why she protests. And she told me that's the reason why, uh, because there are issues even right now in 2020. And, and I absolutely believe that. And I absolutely uh, am running for office because I believe we need to change the mindset and we need to bring community involvement uh, along with the government so that we could all be one unit. And, you know, communication is the key in everything. Uh, and it has to start on the community level and the neighborhood level. But... Um, Thank you. To understand better what's going on. I think we can. Commissioner Richardson, same question. Well, obviously, it's personal for me, uh, Bill. I've been a black man for almost 64 years now. I grew up in the segregated South, and I saw uh, as I was growing up, these kinds of instances happen uh, in the little rural town that I grew up in. And, uh, and it continues even today where innocent black men, and now we're seeing even women are being killed by those who are to, to serve and protect them. Uh, and black lives do matter. I believe all lives matter, but all lives can't matter until black lives matter. And so that's where we are in this country, bringing this country to an understanding that black lives do matter. And they can't be just randomly taken by rogue police officers. And there are some out there, fortunately, we have not seen that in our community, but that national narrative is playing out right here in Tallahassee. And we've got to be sure that our community is more inclusive in every respect, making opportunities uh, for small and minority and African-American owned businesses, making sure that uh, uh, people of, of, of color are represented in our police department and they reflect the community that they do protect and serve, uh, that there are African-Americans involved in every aspect of, of local government, city, county, school board. Uh, that's the way that we will be able to bring all of our community together uh, and become uh, one Tallahassee, the All-America city that she's right. twice been designated. Commissioner Richardson, um, one last uh, piece on this topic. I mean, what does defund the police mean to you? And is there any part of that message that resonates with you? Just looking for a quick answer sure. of 30 seconds on this. Sure. I don't think it means defund the police because we do need the police. But one of the things that we're doing is setting up what we call a human services unit. So if there are issues with homelessness or mental health issues, it's not a police officer uh, with a uniform and a gun going out to address that, but a human services team that will go out that could include a police officer, but they will go out uh, to investigate that situation and determine the services that that person needs or that that family mm -hmm. needs. So, and what they're suggesting is some of the budget that is going to the police department now be directed towards those kinds of services. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Shaq, same question, just 30 seconds. Uh, just 30 seconds. Basically, I'm afraid I forgot what you were talking about. You may want to let me know again. There's a, well, what does defund the police mean oh, gotcha. to you? Gotcha. And is there any part of that message that resonates with you? Got, gotcha. What, what mm -hmm. it speaks to me is, to me, in my opinion, is that we have been defunding the police. We've been taking away programs that worked in our community for a long time. We've never caught up with with hiring enough officers to replace the ones that retire. Um, and we've never been caught up. And the chief will tell you, we don't have uh, the amount of officers we need in our community. So uh, we, we've got to get to a point where we're staffed. We've got to move on getting this new facility built um, so we can create some, some uh, you know, morale boost to have a new facility. So officers want to be part of our new police officer. Police Thank officer. you. All right. Um, now we're moving on to the economy and the League of Women Voters okay. is going to start us out. Thank you. The city and Leon County considered changes to the comprehensive plan that clears the way to develop an additional 2,800 acres of the Walani Plantation. What is your position with respect 
to the track the city and blueprint are on regarding development with this within this area, including the impacts on the environmental and existing neighborhoods, the I-10 exchange, and whether public input has been meaningfully sought and factored into the project. And Mr. Shack, we're staying with you on this in just one minute. Oh, oh okay. Um, well, this issue is a big issue in our community. And uh, as you, you've seen from not only public comment by our by our residents, but uh, the decision to delay uh, movement on this, um, we need the commission to uh, really wait for the citizens to really, you know, let them know uh, what we want in this area. I'm someone who lives in the Kalana States area. I was on the board of directors during the time when this was uh, starting to come about. And I went to a, a bunch of meetings and blueprint meetings and uh, and fought for the road from Walani, you know, the, the road to come to uh, through Kalana States. I really fought that. And after I left the board, the, the current board decided to go ahead and do that. I think the most pressing issue is that they've decided to change it and try to come up with another road to come towards Centerville Road. And that was never on the original plan from what I remember being uh, on that board and listening to conversations. So uh, we need to make sure that we're not, you know, clear cutting entire areas of, of trees. And, you know, the uh, environmental impact on that area was something we should have addressed as well. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Richardson, same question. Christine, that's a lot packed into a one minute answer. But but I would say uh, I was the commissioner who uh, suggested that we slow the process down. This has been an issue that has faced the city of Tallahassee and Leon County for the last 30 years. There has been tremendous community input. We just finished up almost six virtual charrettes where public input was taken uh, into this issue. Uh, we're continuing to do that. Uh, we told staff that we mm -hmm. wanted to slow down, and I made that motion uh, to hear even more uh, uh, public input, to work with the stakeholders to see how we could better uh, write the comp plan amendment so that it would reflect what this community wants to see in that area as we grow. And we will have to grow. That's the only area where we've got the kind of acreage where we can accommodate the population growth that's expected uh, over the next few years in the city of Tallahassee. Now, conversely, we've got to make sure that we have infill development within the urban services area so that there's even development throughout right. our community. In order to grow, we've got to protect our environment uh, and our trees and our, our neighborhood. Voters is going to keep uh, asking the next question. Another one minute question. Okay. In response to public health concerns during the pandemic, the July 8th commission meeting and August 19th budget workshop provided for real time public comment during virtual meetings through WebEx. Will you ensure that the city commission continues or improves upon this practice for all public meetings? And Commissioner Richardson, we're staying with you for one minute. Oh, absolutely. We're we're committed to it. You know, at one point before the governor extended the executive order, we were preparing for real time in person input uh, and we're expecting it. And then the governor uh, extended the executive order and allowed the virtual meetings. We didn't know that th it was going to take this long. And so we didn't begin earlier with the real time public comment, but we've made it a part of our meetings. Uh, we had a meeting up until 10 o'clock the other night, last Wednesday, I believe it was, because we were committed to hearing public input and considering that input in our decision making process. So, yes, we are doing that. We're committed to continuing to do that. Uh, as long as there are health and safety issues, I, I think it's best for the public that we do the virtual uh, meetings. Uh, until we can feel comfortable that we can do it in a safe and healthy manner. But certainly we look forward to public input into our decision making uh, at the city commission. Mr. Shack, same question. No, oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I think public comment is the key to, uh, you know, what commissioners, uh, what they run for office for. They're supposed to work for the people and uh, the people, are the ones that 
that help us decide which way we should go on a certain issue. And, uh, and that's the way it should be. Uh, it shouldn't be our developer friends. It shouldn't be our big boot, our, our big money players that donate to our campaigns. It needs to be the people. And that's something that'll be uh, a little bit different when I'm on that uh, city commission is I'll listen to the people. And, uh, and, and, and I think we should continue to do that, but I think we should get into the uh, city hall as soon as possible because nothing replaces uh, having a citizen look you in the eye as you're getting ready to vote for something and tell them what, why they support something or why they're against something. When they're looking you in the eye, you kind of uh, get a different sense of when you're on a Zoom meeting with them. So uh, I'd like to see us get into city hall as soon as possible. Thank you. Um, all right, and Mr. Shaq, staying with you here, what what do you think of the regulation, regulatory slash growth environment of the city? Are we making it too difficult for the business community to build here, or are we giving away too much to developers at the expense of the character of the community? And uh, this is one minute. Well, it's not it's not so much that that it's the growth that's happening; it's that we're not we don't have some of the infrastructure in place. Uh, to accommodate that growth. So, um, but I still understand, and I'm not a professional in that, but I do understand that there are some, there's still some permitting issues that happens. You know, what, one of the problems is when a, a, a big developer, um, like, like, you know, like the canopy development can, uh, uh, you know, have something where, uh, they violate environmental laws and no one on the city commission could step in and, and, and say anything, but we have to have this, the, the you know, the, the state had to step in and, and find uh, the canopy development uh, developers. But uh, uh, we need to stop uh, doing those kinds of things. We need to make sure that we're holding our, uh, even our, our biggest developers uh, accountable for the things that they're doing to our, uh, our, our, our natural resource, our nat you know, nature here in Tallahassee. So, uh, but that, I think that's one of the things we need to do. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Richardson, same yeah. question. Thank you, Bill. We're trying to reach a, a, a balance, uh, Bill. We know that this community has to grow. A community that's not growing is dying. Like I said, we expect a huge population increase mm -hmm. over the next 10, 20 years in the city of Tallahassee. We've got to be prepared for that growth. It's got to be planned. It's got to be responsible. Uh, and that's what we're doing with the Wilani property. We're working with stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Uh, staff and, and reaching out to the community because we've got a lot of educated and expert people in this community that can give us input into how we should move forward uh, in that respect. And so mm -hmm. we're trying to reach that balance so that we don't see the urban sprawl here in Tallahassee as we grow that we see in South uh, and Central Florida. Uh, we want to make sure that as we grow, it does not have a negative impact on our established neighborhoods, we don't want growth encroaching on those neighborhoods, and we want even growth throughout the community. So we're looking for infield development in those areas that have been neglected over the years, predominantly our African-American neighborhoods in Central and South Tallahassee. All right, and we're gonna talk uh, briefly about uh, disparity here, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Christine at the League of Women Voters is gonna start us out with question number 11. Okay. Thank you. Do you believe that within Leon County, there is disparity in various sectors, such as quality of education, employment, and housing? If so, in what sectors and how would you address it? And Commissioner Richardson, we're starting with you on this for a minute. Okay, yeah, there, there are absolutely disparities. And let me tell you, uh, 30 years ago, my wife and I decided that we would build our home on the south side of Tallahassee where those exact disparities existed. I ran for the Leon County School Board as a single black male because I saw the inequities that existed uh, in this school district. And I knew that I had to be at the table uh, in order to make changes. And we laid the foundation for the school district that we have today. Uh, yes, there are disparities in housing. There are disparities in education, in healthcare, in job opportunities. And I ran for the city commission as an individual who lives on the South side, who attends church on the South side, who has raised my family here to make sure that those issues were addressed. And I have been successful at doing that. If I had time to run through the list of things that we have gotten done for the South side of Tallahassee and neighborhoods like Frenchtown and Providence, uh, 
we are headed in the right direction in that respect. Mr. Shack, same question. One minute. Well, absolutely there is. And uh, I would, I would uh, say that after 30 years, uh, we shouldn't be considered continuing to talk about these issues in the same area that Commissioner Richardson lives in. Uh, the allocations in this community, they must be fair and they must be transparent. You know, I listened to uh, an interview this morning uh, and the question that was uh, given to Commissioner Richardson was, uh, what, what do you feel the progress has been over uh, his career in office? And he said, it's been tremendous. And he just said just now <laughs> that we're still struggling to uh, uh, find a balance. And uh, so, you know, what has been accomplished in those three decades of, of public service here in Tallahassee, uh, in six years of Tallahassee? Um, I don't think progress is tremendous when we have nationally recognized economic segregation in Tallahassee. I don't believe it's tremendous to have the racial disparity that we have in Tallahassee. I don't think it's tremendous to have poverty at the record it is in Tallahassee or the crime rate that it is in Tallahassee. That's not tremendous. So we have a lot to do. Commissioner Richardson, would you like to respond at all? You could have yeah, I absolutely would because if, if my opponent had been listening carefully, he would have known that that question had to do with the, the racial progress that we've made in this community. I was asked that question, how do I think we've progressed in terms of racial uh, uh, interaction in the city of Tallahassee? And I said, since I came here in 1974, there has been tremendous progress made. Do I think there's more that needs to be done? Absolutely, and I, I see e even us retrogressing in that respect, but this is an opportunity for us to bring the entire community together to address the racial issues and the disparities that exist in our community. So I wish I Mr. Shack had listened more carefully to that question. Mr. Shack, staying with you uh, for the next question from the uh, League of Women Voters. Tallahassee is home to the highest poverty zip code in the state. What would you do as a city commissioner to alleviate poverty within the city, including within the 32304 zip code? And one minute on this, Mr. Shack. Okay. Uh, in one minute, I'd say we need to address it. Uh, we need to actually address it with action, not just talk not the promises of uh, how many millions we're spending in specific areas, but as someone who works in the 32304 area code or, or zip code every single day, I see the disparity. I see the, uh, uh, you know, the businesses that are struggling. I see uh, every day the policies that are not being put in place to help. And votes like uh, deciding to, uh, you know, destroy uh, the, the Orange Avenue apartment or, or you know, uh, those apartments for for new housing when those particular buildings from what i saw walking through them uh, mm -hmm. didn't look like they needed to go away um, we could maybe build build this new affordable housing somewhere else in our community to help instead of destroying existing public uh you know uh public housing uh to tell tell thousands of people they can get a voucher and go everywhere they want uh, when there's waiting lists for people to get homes is not a, a decision that we need to continue to make thank you Commissioner Richardson, same question on the uh, 32304 zip code. Well, let me address Mr. Shack and the Orange Avenue apartments. Those apartments are about 50 years old. They're in desperate need of redevelopment and revitalization. And the Tallahassee Housing Authority, which oversees that project, has made that decision. The city is a partner in that. We ought to be breaking ground in the very near future on the face, first phase of that redevelopment. I don't know what he saw when he was there, uh, but when I've been in those apartments, I saw the dire need to make a change in that community that will be transformational for the south side of town. The city of Tallahassee has invested millions of dollars in our community human service partnership program, uh, along with the county, to address some of the issues of poverty in not only 32304, but throughout the city of Tallahassee. Uh, we've got to make sure that our young people have the education that they need, the training that they need, the early investment. Uh, and that might come through our Children's Services Council to make that early investment in their lives so that they get a proper start in life. All right. Uh, you just brought up the Children's Services Council, which yes. is 
uh, good because that's the next question. Uh, we're okay. now going to kind of segue over to amendments and campaigning. Uh, there is no denying that our community's children uh, need help getting the right start in life. Uh, yes creation of a Leon County Children's Service Council, which would impose a property tax rate of up to half a mil or $42 for $100,000 in taxable property values per year is it will be the uh, top local amendment or top local uh, proposal on this year's ballot. What's your position on the Children's Services Council and accompanying tax? And if you don't support it, what should we do instead? Commissioner Richardson, one minute. Well, as I mentioned, I support it uh, because what the committee has done is looked at children's services councils where they have been established throughout the state of Florida. And those councils have made a considerable positive impact on the lives of those children where those dollars have been invested early on in life, that three, zero to three years of age to give them the kind of health care services that they need, developmental services, providing services for their families, uh, giving them early childhood education so that they come to school prepared to learn and don't fall behind prior to grades three or four and then become uh, the dropouts of the future. It's an investment in our children, it's an investment in our families, and it will pay dividends over time. We can invest on the front end or we can pay millions in crime and incarceration and lack of education and training on the back end when these young people become teenagers and adults. And I'm for the early investment. Uh, Mr. Strack, same question. Well, I'm opposed to the Children's Services uh, Council and, uh, and any taxes. Um, I don't believe property owners should foot the bill for failed policies by our city leaders um, that are not uh, improving the lives of all residents, including children. Um, as someone who is a big proponent of the human services area and funding all the organizations, many of them who, who deal specifically with children, uh, I'm someone that believes in our huge uh, $890 million budget that we should be able to find $8 million. Let's think about this. If, if we spend, this community probably gets $200 million at least maybe uh, from federal, state, local programs to help with children's issues. Um, if $8 million is the magic number, um, we should be able to find that in our current city budget. We also have a process of the CHSP grant process that the county and city both fund. Um, and I believe it's uh, $4 million be between the two. And there might be another 500 in what they call promise zones. But the reality is, why can't we increase that and use a process already in place instead of creating a new one that's unelected? And it's basically taxation without representation because there's no oversight by uh, city officials. So staying on this idea about uh, proposals and initiatives, voters will get the chance to weigh in on an amendment that would raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Uh, do you endorse this amendment? Why or why not? One minute, Mr. Shack. No, I don't endorse it at all. I think uh, if you get to a point where you're um, for forcing a, a dollar a year for the next uh, four years, uh, you're going to see a tremendous impact mm -hmm. on business and especially during this time after it's going to take years for businesses to recover from covid so this is not the time to be doing that and uh it's just not the right time and uh, it won't be a right time ever um it's going to destroy business and a lot of businesses are struggling already so it's just not a good time for that thank you uh commissioner richards same question well, I think, Bill, that it's certainly something that we need to consider. I know too many families that are having to work two and three jobs in order to make ends meet at the end of the month and having to make decisions about whether or not they're going to pay the light bill or put food on the table or buy clothes for their children because they're, they're, they're working at minimum wage jobs. $15 is a living wage, meaning that they can just afford the bare essentials. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, many of our businesses, there are areas uh, where there is a living wage being uh, 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 paid at this point. The city of Tallahassee is committed to eventually working our way to a living wage. We're right now at $12 for, uh, per hour uh, for city employees. Uh, and we've made a commitment to work our way to that uh, $15 uh, uh, living wage 
hopefully in the very near future. It is unconscionable that we have people working uh, two and three full-time jobs just to make ends meet. They Thank need you. to have a way to be able to work their way out of poverty. And I think a living wage is one way that they can do it. Thank you. Um, uh, Commissioner Richardson, these days, partisan politics, yeah. and the labels that come along with them are unavoidable. Uh, yeah. On the political spectrum from extreme liberal to extreme conservatism and everything in between, where do you define yourself? And this is a presidential election. Uh, it's a fair question to ask, which top of the candidate ticket are you supporting? Well, uh, uh, Bill, I will tell you this. Uh, I am a registered Democrat. I'm supporting Biden Harris for president and vice president. Uh, but in terms of the decisions that I make as an elected uh, city commissioner, uh, it has nothing to do with politics. It is based on what's in the best interest of the people that I represent here in the city of Tallahassee. That doesn't have a political label. I wanna make sure that everyone, every citizen, regardless of where they live in the city of Tallahassee has an improved quality of life. And that's what I'm all about as an elected official. Thank you. Mr. Shack. same question. Well, I'm a registered Republican, have been my whole entire life. and. Uh, but I'm also with someone you would call a compassionate conservative. So I'm um, someone who works at a homeless shelter, helps the disabled, uh, does some things that people want to put Republicans in a box for not caring about. And that's just ridiculous. Um, I appreciate the fact that uh, Commissioner Richardson said that this is a nonpartisan race and decisions are made for the best, uh, you know, uh, for the people. It doesn't matter who they are. Um, as far as, uh, you know, votes and things that I do, I voted for people of both parties, but, uh, I believe votes are private. I believe once you get in that booth, you make a decision that's best for you and best that you think is for your country. And that's the way I am uh, on this presidential election as well. Thank you. Um, uh, one last question on this. Uh, do you have any self-imposed restrictions on who you won't accept campaign contributions from? What's your philosophy on bundling? And do developers get a bigger say in who gets elected because of the amount of money they're able to donate through multiple corporations. Mr. Shack, we'll start with you on this. Well, I'll tell you that uh, there's not a lot of uh, big corporations that are out there going to support somebody brand new and somebody from the outside like me. So I don't really have to worry about that. Um, so I'm looking forward to anyone who wants to contribute to my campaign, which is a true uh, outsider uh, campaign that's 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 going to keep his promises of of digging in deep to what's going on in the city of Tallahassee. And what I mean by that are the bundled donations that we need to address and fix uh, the thousands of dollars that candidates can get um, uh, uh, uncovering a brand new uh, organization that started in Tallahassee by Tallahassee royalty uh, that put $20,000 into a pack. And then they right after the primary write a $10,000 check uh, to a, a political consulting firm uh, is very curious. Um, for, for my race, but um, mm. it is something that we need to stop. We need to stop the, the bundled money. We need to stop those things because uh, it really does impact uh, who our city officials work for. And just Thank to you. say again, I'll be working for the people. Okay. Commissioner Richardson, same question. Well, Bill, as I mentioned, I've served in elective office for almost 20 years now. Uh, and there is not one instance where anybody can look back and look at my campaign contributions and say where that influenced a vote that I took. I don't operate that way. My service has been moral, it's been ethical, uh, uh, and it's been with integrity. Uh, and that's how I serve now. So if someone uh, wants to uh, contribute to my campaign, if it's legal, ethical, and moral, I will consider accepting that uh, uh, contribution. I have sent money back during this election cycle because I didn't feel comfortable accepting contributions from the person who sent me the checks. Uh, and so that's how I operate. More say, less say. Uh, my neighbor, my retired neighbor has as much sway with me in terms of how I vote as someone who might have contributed uh, $250 to my campaign. No, money does not influence how I vote on issues that come before the commission. Can you elaborate on who you returned the uh, uh, check no, to? No, I won't. Okay. I won't. Um, 
All right. Well, we're now going to shift over to the lightning round. Uh, so this okay. is a little bit of change of pace. Uh, this is a uh, one sentence answer. Uh, it will be a, uh, uh, you know, obviously you can explain your answer with an and or a but. Try to avoid the run-ons. Um, uh, we're going to start with a question that came into us from Facebook asking about your opinion on the changes at Lake Ella of what many would call homeless deterrence of uh, knocking down pavilions, uh, uh, putting separators in between benches. Uh, do you think that was a good move or uh, not necessarily? Uh, Commissioner Richardson, starting with you on this. Well, uh, I, my opinion is is uh, mm. Lake Ella is a public park. It attracts uh, families and children, uh, and, uh, and and it began to attract uh, an, ordinate, an inordinate number of homeless people, uh, and the quality of that park had begun to suffer. Uh, I, I had not been there in a while, but I understand from reports uh, that, you know, people were, were being accosted uh, by the homeless individuals. They, there was uh, trash and, you know, people were using the bathrooms outside. Uh, and so the point is, is that there, there's more that needs to be done for our homeless population so that they don't have to go to our parks that are designed for children and families right. and for our businesses. So we need to do more for our homeless population as a community. Mr. Shack, we obviously are gonna start the lightning round on the next one, uh, but uh, you've got uh, 30 seconds to answer this. Uh, the question about Lake Ella, uh, obviously I'm someone who works with the homeless every day. I believe we need to bring some uh, uh, dignity and respect to people that don't have a place to live. And the folks that aren't staying uh, in the facility that we're uh, putting people up in, uh, we, need to, we need to help them. But the pro problem is we don't have a facility to do that and we don't have a day service to do that. In fact, the only day service that uh, was running in Tallahassee has now closed their doors. And uh, so... Uh, and that was a partnership with the city of Tallahassee. So the city of Tallahassee really has to get serious on how we're going to really uh, uh, bring some dignity to people who don't have a place to live and uh, putting those barriers on benches and taking down the one uh, you know area where people could stay under the rain or, or guests can come hand out food to people was a terrible mistake. Thank you. All right. Now we, now we are, shifting. <laughs> and this is going to be one sentence with an and, and I'm going to be very strict, but that one was tough because it came from, from Facebook. So these, these questions are more framed to be easy to answer in one sentence. Mr. Shack, when should the county repeal the mask ordinance? Well, it's funny you should say that. I just uh, heard a, uh, a roundtable discussion with uh, experts, doctors, scientists, and the governor. And one of the experts said that the mask mandate is something that uh, mm -hmm. uh, isn't proven to work. And uh, so, uh, you know, this is a medical expert and everybody wants to talk about experts, but this particular doctor in this round table said, uh, so I think the mask mandate should be lifted right now. Lifted right now. All right, mm -hmm. Commissioner Richardson, same question. I disagree with Mr. Shack. One medical expert does not determine what we should do to protect the health and safety of the citizens of this community. Uh, and so if people like Dr. Fauci, who I have a great deal of respect for and medical professionals and scientists throughout this country say, we need to continue wearing masks to prevent the spread of this horrendous uh, uh, pandemic, then we wear a mask. It's All right. very little to ask uh, for our health and safety. Uh, Commissioner, this may be a hypothetical question or a real uh, question. Would you okay. send your school age children to brick and mortar or digital schooling and why? One sentence. My wife and I determined that it was best for our daughter to stay at home and do the virtual academy. Uh, it wasn't so much that we feared what she might get at school, but if she got something at school and brought it home uh, to us, I have high blood pressure. I have what they call those underlying conditions. I have high blood pressure. My wife is a Thank cancer you. survivor. So we were more concerned about something being brought home to us than her. Uh, All not right. being um, able to go to school. Same question. Uh, my daughter is attending Lincoln High School right now. And uh, so uh, I, I think the kids should go to school. But I also believe that parents should have a choice. So uh, whether Commissioner Richardson chooses to keep his child at home, he has great reason to do it. 
and I, I'm keep having my daughter go to school. Uh, we all, right. all need to make that responsible choice. What is what is a num what is the number one infrastructure improvement you would champion? Only one. I, you're asking me, right? Yep. Okay. The the number one, uh, probably number one, would be to. Uh, uh, I, I think we have to improve the the areas of town that have been promised infrastructure changes for decades. Uh, the street lights, sidewalks. Let's get these communities looking like communities so they can uh, start to build up their uh, where, where they live. All right, Commissioner Richardson. One you yep. can accomplish one infrastructure improvement. What would that be? Well, Bill, since I came to the commission uh, and the CRTPA, Capital Regional Transportation Planning Agency, I've advocated for the widening of Orange Avenue from South Adams to Capital Circle Southwest. Traffic on that segment of Orange Avenue uh, where I live is horrendous, uh, and it needs to be widened so that we can improve the traffic flow in that area. Uh, Commissioner Richardson, what is a, the number one development you would want to see through in this term as a commissioner? Uh, that, uh, there is no question that it would be the redevelopment and revitalization of the Orange Avenue apartments. Bill, that will be transformational uh, to the south side of Tallahassee because in addition to replacing the low-income housing, uh, there will also be uh, mixed-use housing. And that's what we need on this side of town to improve development and to attract businesses to this area. Mr. Shaq, same, what is the number one development you'd wanna see through as a commissioner? Once again, all the promises we've made over the past, uh, how many years, uh, we need to bring some economic opportunity uh, to areas of town that don't have it. So we need to bring grocery stores and businesses to areas uh, like the South Side so that we can, again, make community and give people an opportunity to make a living. Uh, Mr. Shaq, what is your most prized endorsement other than your constituents, family, et cetera? I guess my prize, most prized endorsement are people that uh, uh, are, are supporting me, but are too afraid to say it out loud. And, and I think you know what I mean by that in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, I have a lot of support from people that tell me they support me and they're gonna vote for me. Unfortunately, they're not able to have their name on a voter roll because they might get seen in front of a certain judge. And I think that's the people that I really- uh, Bill, don't go there. Me. Don't go there, Bill Shack. Don't even in, in, intimate that. I'm just saying what, who-, who No, no, I, no, 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 no. Uh-uh, don't do okay. it, please. All right. I'm asking you. Okay. Commissioner Richardson, same uh, question. What is your most prized endorsement other than your constituents, family, et cetera? Well, there's nobody in this community that's supporting me that would not publicly be able to say that they're supporting me. 48% of the voters in the primary did just that. I have been endorsed by the Firefighters Union, the PBA, uh, and the Board of Realtors. And I value each of those endorsements uh, because those are constituencies that I have worked with and look forward to working with as we go forward uh, in this community. Thank you. Name one city ordinance or policy that should be immediately repealed. Commissioner Richardson. Well, uh, Bill, I, I can't think of one that I would say immediately would need to be repealed. I, I, I of course, don't know all of the ordinances that we have in the city of Tallahassee, but I can't think of one that I would say needed to immediately be repealed. Mr. Shaq, same question. Well, I don't know if it's an ordinance, but I certainly would repeal any kind of uh, uh, opportunity for people who want to be city vendors to play political consultants and give uh, uh, um, big cash donations to commissioners who vote on their projects and their contracts. I don't know if that's an ordinance, but that's something that needs to change. Name one specific thing the city uh, is not spending enough money on and one thing the city is spending too much money on. I think, you know, like, like I'm saying in my campaign, I think we're not spending enough money on human services, and I don't think it needs to come from a new tax. Um, I, I think it needs to come from our huge budget and uh, something we're spending too much money on. Our, our city loves to, to uh, hire consultants, and they love to hire lobbyists, so I think we spend too much money on that. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Richardson, same question. Well, Bill, I think that there are, there are funds in the police department's budget that can be redirected. Uh, towards human services uh, in, in the human services unit that I talked about that would include uh, 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 
therapists and social workers that would go out and review cases uh, that maybe the police wouldn't necessarily need to do in uniform with a gun. Uh, and I would like to see us, mm -hmm. and we have increased funding for our community human service partnership program over the years. When our budget will allow, it will not at this point, we barely were able to balance the budget given the pandemic uh, to put more money into uh, human and social services. Okay, another question from Facebook. As a commissioner, would you be willing to voluntarily recognize a workers union at the city? One sentence, Commissioner Richardson. Voluntarily work? Recognize well, a union made up of workers that wanted to unionize. I certainly support uh, workers' right to unionize. Uh, my wife worked for the teachers union for 18 years. I was a member of the United Faculty of Florida. Uh, and so I support workers' right to unionize for wages and for collective bargaining. All right, uh, Mr. Shack, same question. Um, I, I don't I don't know enough information uh, just by saying, uh, you know, I'd have to know what that main, means and what's involved in it, but uh, I, I don't think I could give that answer right now with the limited amount of information. Okay. Um, what one item are you most proud of that you took a leadership role in over the past couple of years? One item, just okay. one. This is Shaq. Well, for me, that's easy. The one item is uh, Hurricane Michael relief. Uh, when, when, when the devastation came of Hurricane Michael, I was uh, a leader working with uh, uh, Operation Barbecue Relief here in Tallahassee, um, not only recruiting more members to come to uh, uh, the Northwood Mall and help uh, serve meals, but partnered with uh, the Red Cross and the Salvation Army and uh, uh, fed 7,000 meals to uh, surrounding counties. I think that was a, a really great thing that uh, I was able to participate in. Commissioner Richardson, same question. What one thing? Well, advocating for the fire station uh, on Lake Bradford Road. When I came to uh, the CRA board, mm -hmm. we saw that the calls for service were highest in that area, in the south side of town, uh, and this response time was longest. And so I advocated over the years for a police station on Lake Bradford Road to serve uh, the south and southwest portion of our community. And we have approved that. Uh, and as soon as the funding is available, once we get past this pandemic, it will be built on Lake Bradford Road, serving this area. Thank you. All right. That was uh, the end of the quasi lightning round but uh, we've been through <laughs> uh, so we are uh getting toward the ending here uh we're gonna go a little bit into overtime but i promise we will have everybody out by 210 uh i think we'll do a couple questions on ethics with the league of women voters and uh um then it's going to be closing arguments where y'all can make the case directly to voters okay uh, so the league of women voters will get us started the purpose of the multimodal transportation district is to allow greater density in return for increased walking, biking, and mm -hmm. public transit. Currently, the city is encouraging increased density, but has not invested in facilitating walking, biking, and public transit within the district. Should the MMTD be abolished since it isn't being implemented? And what will you do to remedy this unbalanced situation? Um, and uh, Commissioner Richardson, we will start with you on that. Well, I, I think that we are uh, taking a hard look at the MMTD and there are areas where it's working. Midtown uh, is an area where it's working, College Town. Uh, you know, we have a, a uh, during the legislative session, uh, we have a trolley that would take people around to the different areas of the city that and, and encourage them to walk. We are, have approved alternative methods of transportation, the scooters, uh, bicycles. Uh, so we are taking a hard look at that and, and doing what the best we can uh, to implement that MMTD uh, in other areas of the community. And so I think that uh, give us time uh, and we will get it right uh, because that's one of the things that we'd like to see happen in our community, that it be more walkable and get people out of those cars uh, and, and using alternative means of transportation like walking and bicycling and, and scooters so we Thank can you. reduce our carbon footprint. 
Mr. Shack, same question on the multimodal approach. Well, to well, I think we've been trying to, to do something like that. We've been talking about an 18 hour downtown for a long time and, and we, we keep building, uh, uh, you know, we keep wanting graduates to stay in Tallahassee and move to Cascades Park and live in $2,000 a month apartments. And, and those things aren't going to happen. So, but, but what you don't see right now, especially downtown, is you, where, where are the bike lanes downtown? Where are the, uh, uh, you know, I saw a lady almost get hit by a car on the corner of Monroe and Tennessee Street. Uh, we want to have this, but we don't even have a plan in place right now to, to, to do that. So uh, I think it, it's all great but we need to put that in place. What we do is we have bike roads and, and sidewalks on areas of Capitol Circle that never get used by bikes and walkers. So though, if we're going to do something, let's go ahead and, and, and really, really do it and focus on it. Because right now I don't think we're really focused on it. It sounds good, but we're not doing it. All right, so turning to ethics um, and uh, Christine, uh, you wanna take uh, question number 17, I believe it is. Thank you. Does the city's ethics code and the city's independent ethics board need further strengthening? What specifically needs to be added? Mr. Shack, we're starting with you on this. Well, like I said, our, 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 our commission is going to tell us how great our ethics um, are in Tallahassee now, and it's so strong. But the reality is we still are allowed to take thousands of dollars for campaigns. We're still uh, voting on uh contracts and, and and vendors who also participate highly and donate a lot of money to campaigns. Uh, those are some reforms we need to have right now. And uh, it doesn't sound like anyone's interested in, in, in looking at those types of things. Those are the kinds of ethics problems that we have that are real and keep a lot of people like myself out of running for office because it's really, really difficult to compete with that kind of uh, money. And now you have PACs and new organizations that start that have $20,000 that are going to th their choices for commission. Uh, those are problems we need to stop. So, uh, you know, it's not about ethical conduct per se. And, and we have a great, uh, sounds like we got a new ordinance for that kind of thing. But we need to look at the ethics of how people do business in Tallahassee because we still have a corruption problem here. Uh, and uh, Commissioner Richardson, same question. Well, I'm going to say, first of all, Mr. Shack is ill-informed about our MMTD. We do have dedicated bike lanes throughout uh, this community. So he's ill-informed in that respect. We have one of the, if not the strongest ethics policies in the state of Florida. We have an independent ethics board and an independent ethics officer that handles ethics complaints that come to them from whatever source they come. If it needs strengthening, we will rely on that board and the ethics officer uh, to bring recommendations to us for strengthening, which they have not at this point, because they are uh, independent of city government. Uh, and we want it that way. The community wants it that way. So we will rely on them to let us know if that ordinance needs to be further strengthened uh, uh, in terms of our uh, ethics laws. What Mr. Shack is talking about has nothing to do with ethics. Those are election issues, and he needs to take that up with the legislature, where it's predominantly Republican. Thank you. Um, so there have been high profile investigations and even the arrest of a sitting commissioner. Is corruption still a problem at the city level? And if so, what would you recommend to do uh, about it? Uh, Commissioner Richardson, you're the only remaining sitting commissioner mm -hmm. who served during the time Scott Maddox was committing the crimes he pled guilty to. Uh, what differences do you see in the commission and staff behavior then and now? Well, Bill, I would tell you, first of all, I did not serve when Scott was committing those crimes. That had already happened and the investigation occurred when I was elected to the commission. Our terms overlapped, I think, by maybe a year or two. So, no, I wasn't there when those crimes were being committed. And I never have been involved in anything like that ever in my public service. Uh, what we did as a result was pass one of the strongest ethics laws uh, in the state of Florida. We have an independent ethics board with an independent ethics officer. We just established an inspector general uh, so that those issues that don't rise to uh, the, the level of an ethics complaint can still be investigated 
and and uh, uh, consequences doled out by our inspector general. Uh, ethics training has become a part of the culture of the city of Tallahassee. Uh, in order for someone to qualify for a, a, a salary increase, they have to show that they have completed annual ethics training. So we're serious about this ethics issue in the city of Tallahassee. Uh, Mr. Shack, same question. Well, yeah, obviously, I'm someone who believes that we still have an issue in Tallahassee. As long as that uh, thousands of dollars of money can influence, uh, uh, or we say do not influence votes, um, but I believe they do. And uh, for, for Commissioner Richardson to say in the previous Democrat forum that corruption has never been a problem in Tallahassee is an absolute falsehood because it has been. And it's something that we struggle with uh, even to this day. So, uh, you know, we need to hold our city manager accountable too. I think that's part of our problem. Uh, you know, giving a city manager a five out of five by three commissioners um, mm -hmm. right after a botched police chief search um, is, is, is sort of like a corruption issue. Uh, we got to hold our people sure. accountable. We didn't mm -hmm. hold the last city manager accountable for his actions, and we certainly aren't holding this city manager accountable. And that's one of the things I'm going to bring to the city commission. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Com uh, Commissioner Richardson, did you want to respond yes. uh, for 30 seconds? Well, you know, th there was one individual who did things outside of the city uh, that were determined corrupt. He was caught for that and is now suffering the legal consequences of that, whatever the outcome tends to be when they eventually go to trial or whatever that, wherever that process is at this point. There were two people, uh, the former city manager uh, and the former mayor uh, who had some ethics issues and those were dealt with by the state ethics commission. Now, if there are other instances of corruption at city hall uh, Mr. Shaq says, well, you know, you give him a five out of five, that could be corrupt, kind of like corruption, file a complaint. But I don't see corruption among our staff and the hardworking employees of the city of Calais. All right. We have made it to the end. Uh, and this is closing argument time. Uh, uh, Mr. Shaq, we're going to start with you. You get a full minute and 30 seconds to uh, make your case directly to voters. Feel free to give your website uh, uh, and any other pertinent information. And uh, fire away when ready, Mr. Shad. I, I appreciate it. Thank you, um, Mr. Hatfield and Christine for uh, helping us today. I think uh, this is some great information for the voters. But the bottom line, 2020, this election is really about a choice. And uh, it's about a choice for real change for our community. It's about a choice for a new direction and a choice for a new vision for Tallahassee. Uh, after three decades of service, we commend Commissioner Richardson for his long service to our community. However, um, when you've been in office for so long, you tend to get up to the top and look down on the people of Tallahassee. And I think it's time for someone like me who works with the homeless for the past five years, is involved in a lot of community outreach and when you're at eye level with somebody and you can just hand out, you know, and stretch out your hand for people to help them, um, it's a lot better than looking at them from, from up above. And I think that's the difference in this election. In this climate, in this community, in this uh, country, uh, people want to be heard and they want to be heard by representatives that are even with them, that understand them and that have not lost touch with who they are and what they want. And that's what I'm going to offer the people of Tallahassee. I'm someone who is with you, working hand in hand with you every single day. And uh, I believe people want a leader who are close to the people. And there's nobody closer than, than I and what I do for a living every single day to help people live better lives. So uh, as long as people can feel like they can look at your representative and feel like they're going to be heard, I'm telling the people of Tallahassee, not the person that is going to bring that for them. So thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Richardson, you have the last word. Thank you, Bill. Christine, thank you for having us today. I, I think the choice is clear. Uh, someone who has served this community, uh, not only in elective office, uh, but in a number of different capacities to make sure that the quality of life of all of our citizens, regardless of where they live, is improved. That's what my whole adult life has been about. I'm so proud that my daughter 
has followed that example and is willing to serve her country uh, at the United States Naval Academy. I've been on the city commission for six years now. I served two years as mayor pro tem, and there are concrete examples of the kinds of things that I have advocated for and worked with my colleagues to achieve that are moving this uh, uh, city forward. We have responded, we have had one of the best responses of any municipality to this pandemic. We have balanced a budget without raising taxes, without laying off any of our employees. That money is being put back into people's pockets and spent in the economy. We've supported our small business through grants uh, and our nonprofit organizations. Uh, we make sure that the level and quality of services that the citizens of this city receive are second to none. And that has not changed despite this pandemic. I look forward to working with my colleagues to continue to move our wonderful city forward, the all America city that Tallahassee has twice been designated. We've been recognized in so many ways for where we are at the head of the pack. Uh, and with me on the city commission and the experience uh, that I bring, uh, we will continue to move forward. All thank right. You. Thank you. And I want to thank everyone out there watching today and educating themselves on this uh, important race uh, and all the races for voters in November. Uh, I want to thank mm -hmm. the women voters as well and the candidates for uh, taking mm -hmm. your time. Visit Tallahassee.com backslash elections for more on this and all the races and issues facing voters. You can also visit the League of Women Voters Vote 411 website for additional information on local races, our next forum will be at 1 p.m. Tuesday with the candidates for superintendent of schools. Okay. Please also look for our special election section, which prints on Sunday, October 4th. There will be interviews with all the uh, candidates, including uh, the two you got to hear from today. Thank you all and have a great day. Thank you all Thank very you. much. Bye-bye.